Welcome to the Success Story Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Clary. On this podcast, I have candid interviews with execs, celebrities, politicians, and other notable figures, all who have achieved success through both wins and losses, to learn more about their life, their ideas, and their insights. I sit down with leaders and mentors and unpack their story to help pass those lessons on to others through both experiences and tactical strategy for business professionals, entrepreneurs, and everyone in between. Without further ado, another episode of the Success Story Podcast. Hey, thanks again for joining me today. I am sitting down with Rosie Mercado. Now, Rosie has been capturing the hearts and imaginations across the globe with her story, her persona, her beauty. She was an expert life coach on a powerful talk show called Face the Truth, produced by Dr. Phil and Jay McGraw's Stage 29 Productions. Uh, It was a traditional talk show that dealt with conflict and provides people with a usable takeaway. She is a proud bilingual Latina. She is a crossover star who also guest hosts and is a correspondent on the leading Spanish language networks, Telemundo and Univision, as well as on the Emmy Award winning Dr. Phil show and The Doctors, the journey of her 240 pound weight loss and life transformation uh, has basically launched her into a prominent voice, a known, well-known voice for women's empowerment. Um, She sees her calling as advocating for people who are marginalized, uh, transforming societal norms so that all are valued and appreciated. Uh, In April of 2019, she was named as the top 25 most powerful Latinas. And she is just uh, an absolute delight, full of energy, full of positivity. Um, Very excited. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about, about your story. Oh, thank you so much. It's always great to have an opportunity to be able to share. And, and the, biggest, um, the biggest goal is to create impact and just really pay it forward. And if someone can take, have, if it's one person that we impact and they have a great takeaway and it's transformative, then the job is done. Like that's a blessing. I, I 100% agree. Um, and I think that you've had an incredible story uh, just as you've evolved over your career and now you're becoming more of a household name, but I always like to tee it up, sort of bring it back to, to the roots. So, so tell me your story. Tell me how you became who you are today, right from the, from, right from the very start. I think from the very start, I mean, I think it, it, it comes up when, it, you know, as you're growing up, you know, being Latina and coming from a Mexican household and coming from invert parents to come out here with the hunger, with having nothing in their pockets and just building something out of nothing. Um, you know, building with hard work, strong values, um, a big vision, a big heart and understanding their, you know, their, their priorities and their values along the way, having a strong family value. So coming from that and being able to have learned that and apply that in my own life really gave me the startup to really knock on doors, keep knocking, having thick skin and not giving up because I got to see my dad as he built his own business, you know, knocking on doors and just always trying to find a way if something didn't work. It's like, try a different way, try a different way, keep knocking on the door, the door closes down, window opens up, like always find a way to get to where you want, but have a bigger purpose than it just being for you. It was always the purpose of being able to provide for us, give us, you know, getting us to a better place than where they started when they were younger at their age. So having a vision and having that and always being able to pay it forward with the intention of helping others. So growing up, I mean, I was always plus size. That was a big thing. You know, I was always a, a big girl, got criticized a lot. So I felt like I was very much of a loner when, when I was in high school, um, got picked up, on, picked up, um, not picked up, picked on a lot, bullied a lot. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of shit for my weight and for my hips. And I look back now and I'm like, damn, I wasn't even that big. Um, but I got a lot of shit and it really messed with my mind. It messed with my mind. And I'm thankful in the sense that I was, you know, you always have to have gratitude for good times. You're always grateful. It's easy to be grateful for the good. But when the bad stuff, when the shit happens, that's when it's hard to be grateful. And and I think I've learned now that in those moments, you have to learn, you know, what is it trying to teach you? And I think, you know, everything in life happens for a reason. And those were moments that for me were prepping me to get to where I am now and to be able to not not only connect, but have a more compassionate uh, and heart and understanding to be able to understand what other people go through. Um, You know, getting that constant bully, that pushback, um, help me get prepped for knocking on doors to understanding what my purpose was and, and going that after it fearlessly, you know, going into auditions and knocking, you know, on different doors for, you know, production companies and, and going into studios and not knowing what to do and constantly getting no or getting that, I, you know, I have a beautiful face, but I have a really fat body or, you know, um, my ethnic background played a role. 
you know, having been bullied kind of sets you up for, okay, like I keep getting no's and some people are really nice about doing it gracefully. And some people are really mean and just tell you like, Hey, what are you thinking? You're just too fat to get to where you're going. Um, so I'm just, I'm just thankful for the values that my parents showed me and for everything that I went through that got me into a place of understanding body image, understanding how the psychology of that plays, you know, as you're growing up, um, having failed relationships helped me a lot because it helped me better understand what is it that I'm really looking for. And, um, I think when it comes down to it is that I, th I think you are always showing your purpose along the way. You're always leaning into, you know, what is it that I absolutely loved? And I loved talking. I, I could remember that I loved talking. I didn't have much people to talk to. So having my first opportunity to go into radio and not being able to connect with anybody in high school because of the bullying um, gave me this opportunity that nobody's looking at me. There's a mic in front of me. They don't see my weight, but they get to hear me. And that's where I understood that my voice mattered. Um, and that was the start of it all. It was the start of it all. Working for free, working for experience. That was a big one for me. So tell me something, tell me something. When, when you, when you were first starting your career, was it, it was radio first and then you went into modeling after, or was it almost like simultaneous? You were trying to expand and do both things at the same well, time. It never occurred to me that I could ever model. Why? Because I was 420 pounds. I was, I was a really big girl. Um, and you know, you're 420 pounds. And I wanted to make a part of street, you know, because I, I felt like, okay, you know, everybody kept telling me I had a beautiful face. Well, I feel like that was like the closest that I could get into TV production. I always loved everything about TV. I loved the behind the scenes. I loved looking. I loved the red carpets. I love when I saw um, women on the red carpet interviewing. Oh my God. Juliana Rancic. Like when I would see, you know, I, you know, when I saw Emmy growing up, you know, and, and doing, you know, her, her, her shows, you know, doing all these interviews, visiting all these places, you see all these people, you know, doing all these things that you just like, wow, you know, I wish that was me. Never thought in a million I could do it because I was so heavy. And I kept getting told that I was so heavy. So the closest that I got to was first makeup artistry. Um, and I did makeup at school. I got paid $25 to do makeup for proms and, and, and I helped with my way. And I never thought I was like, I'm making money as a teenager. You're great. Um, here comes along an opportunity that I, my aunt wins some tickets and I go with her and DJ starts, you know, the, ra the radio personality starts screwing around in Spanish and I kind of join in and I didn't speak the best Spanish either, but he loved it. He loved my personality. He's like, why don't you come back? So that kind of found me. Um, then one day out of doing makeup, I had my daughter, I had to figure out a way to provide and I needed to make more money. So there was a sense of how am I going to provide? And that's where the entrepreneurial side started building. My dad says, you know, hey, you're in the makeup business. You're in the radio. You have all these connections. Start promoting yourself. What else can you offer? And, you know, what services can you offer? What can you create? I created a makeup line. And as that, you know, came up, money came up. Okay, well, you need money to make, make you know, uh, make more business and, you know, make more money come your way. So my, and when you don't have it, you got to be smart with it. So I didn't have money to pay models. So everybody kind of tell me you have a beautiful face, but you're too fat. Well photographer says, well, it's going to cost, you know, just, just to get a couple models, it's going to cost, you know, a couple thousand dollars just to start. And I'm like, how am I going to do that? I don't have the money. I don't have that kind of money either. I buy the product or I buy the models. So he says, do the makeup on your face and I'll take pictures of your face. Nobody has to know, you know, I don't have to take pictures of the rest of your body, just your face. <laughs> and when that happened, my picture went viral. My picture went viral because someone posted the picture of my face and I've always had a thinner face. I've had a big body and a thinner face. That's just the structure of the way I've always looked thin in the face. Never, mm -hmm. never have I looked full. My pictures went viral. I had the Miss America pageant reach out to me wanting for me, for me to join in. They did not know that I was, that I was heavy. That was the most like shocking moment when they actually wrote to me, inviting me to be part of Miss America. Um, and then I had agencies just like straight size agencies hitting me up saying, we want you to model. We want you with us. And when that, that kind of blew my mind. And, and when I wrote to them, I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm, they're like, send us a picture of your full body. And when I did, they're like, this is photoshopped. And I'm like, horrible. That's I don't horrible. get it. It's photoshopped. I'm like, I told you I was a big girl. They're like, no, they photoshopped the big body on a small face or either that, or you photoshop the hell out of your face to make yourself look really thin and then silence. So it found me through all of, of the searching and finding a way to provide for my fam uh, family, 
modeling found me and the first time that I got to do it, do it, I fell in love with it. So it's a crazy journey how life works out, but I've learned the lesson there was what is meant for you will be for you as long as you keep hustling and looking for opportunities. And as long as your values are really set that it's not from a place of ego, but from a place of love and, and really being able to either provide for others, impact others, teach others. It's always about putting that energy out there. What is yours will find you. And that found me. Amen. I love that. You're, you're so full of positivity. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, what you've done with, with, uh, um, like your education and what you've done with uh, Tony Robbins and just like the life coach aspect that you're sort of work. That's part of like who you are now. But back then that wasn't really the thing. I'm sure you, you had a lot of um, issues, uh, you know, that's like, that's, that's not, that's, and I, when I first, when I first, when we first started speaking, like you were just laughing, like, I think that it, it seemed to me like when I brought up, you know, your, your journey, there's a lot of things that you look back on and it's, and there's a lot of like, you know, holy shit moments. Like, you know, the, the mindset that you had back then is so different from what you have now, which is understandable, right? Because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you're capable of and you don't know, um, you don't know, I guess what, what you can do and how, how, you know, how powerful and how successful you can be when everyone's telling you can't, you can't, you can't. And this yeah. is, this is not really meant to be like, um, like I mean, it's not really meant to be like a, like a, a motivational podcast by any means, but it's like your story is by definition, a motivational story. It's like an upbringing story. And I, and I love it. And, and I guess like, how did you, so, so how did you develop this mindset? Because if I was getting told every day that, Oh, your face is good, but I send in a photo of my body and they're like, no, that's Photoshop. That is the most demoralizing, like, like uh -huh. just devastating thing I could think anybody could ever tell me that my actual body looks like it's photoshopped to someone that's disgusting if somebody would ever say that well not only that just i mean just okay so just imagine so you're so you're doing your passion you're like you were interviewing these stories and just imagine like you were you've interviewed some amazing human beings that have they're full of knowledge love and power and so just imagine like you are like you, you want you this is your dream this is what you want to do the rest of your life and then they just tell you hey you're a shitty host and like, and you keep getting that you're a shitty host, you're a shitty host, you're a shitty host. And you know what? We don't love the way that you talk and you just constantly get, get that. Obviously that's going to bring you down, but then it comes to a point where you're like, well, I've heard that so many times, either one, it's true or two, I'm just going to give up or three. They've already, I'm not going to hit any more, you know, rock bottom. So I might as well, like, if I really love this, I'm going to figure how to become better mm -hmm. one to what you know who's doing what i love you know the best way possible what did they do to get there and then three i'm so sick of hearing negativity that i need some positivity that i'm going to start feeding my spirit positivity i'm going to understand that you're angry about something and you're giving me all that negative energy that even if you say that i'm a shitty host hey thanks for taking the time and, and telling me that but i'm going to keep doing me while i get become better because look when I started hosting, when I started modeling, I could tell you the first couple of times I did not do the best. It was a learning experience and I got pinches and I got looks and I got like, you know, don't do this. This doesn't quite look too well. Or you know what, Rosie, you're speaking way too fast in English and it's not Spanish, slow it down. Or what did you just say? Or why did you say that? Um, I think we start off in a place as a novice and you get better and better and better with time experience and investment into yourself into learning into feeding your spirit and your soul and constantly listening to what people have to say even if it's negative you 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 listen and say okay i i don't like what i'm hearing but let me see how can i become better and constantly just asking that question and even when it makes you cringe not giving in because there's some moments that i've broken down and cried and i'm like all right i'm gonna cry this really sucked this really hurt i feel like giving up what if what they're saying is true well i'm not gonna let that become my truth and even if i am a shitty model right now and you guys don't like it and i'm really fat i'm gonna keep going because i have to do this for me and not for you what I've noticed too, and I'm seeing it with you as well, a lot of people that got through something, you can tell their, their, their moral fiber and their, and their persona is so much stronger than somebody that never had to go through things. I've noticed that time and time again. And now like the conviction which you speak about, um, just, just really positive personality traits, 
that is something that is like core to your personality that a lot of people don't experience that level of understanding of, of, of positivity and mindfulness. And I, I don't even know if it's, it's manifestation, but just understanding the drive and the will that it takes to get what you need if they had an easy road there. They don't yeah. see that struggle. Yeah, you know, I, and I'm, I'm no, I've noticed that a lot that when things like when you put your tears and years of hard work and you get a lot of shit for it and you fight through that and there's this hunger that comes about wanting to get on the other side so bad. Not to prove, well, some people, sometimes it is to prove other people wrong. You've got to be honest. Sometimes it is to prove people wrong. But I think most of the time it's about proving that's not going to be true. That is not who I am. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get on that other side. And along the way, because I've invested so much time, I refuse to give up because this is, I've worked for this years and it's not been overnight. And when you've invested that much time and energy, money and, um, and thought, it is not something that I'm willing to let go. I'm not willing to let it go because number one, it makes me happy Two, I love the transformation that I've gone through the good and the bad, because the bad has made me more compassionate and more connected. And the good has given me the moments to celebrate all the hard work and the sacrifices because you got to sacrifice one thing to get the other. And um, I'm thankful for the bad moments because it gives you it gives you that hunger. It gives you that it gives you that fire under your butt to keep going. It really does. And you do not want to hit rock bottom when you when you go through all that stuff. So very well said. Very well said. Now, let's keep going through through your career. So when was when was the point when you were actually after this whole you know issue with the the face and the photoshop and it wasn't photoshop what's next in your career what's the next stage of of your life well well the next stage was crazy my my picture went viral because they didn't understand how a 420 pound woman could have a beautiful face that looked thin and didn't match the body so it's like okay you're beautiful from the face but how can you be big so that was like everybody's kind of like shocked back so, so when my picture went viral, a production company reached out to me and the show was called Curvy Girls and I got to be part of a reality show of, you know, they captured my journey and, you know, figuring out, am I going to lose weight? Am I not going to lose weight? Um, do I really want to go into modeling? You know, how much do I want it? And what the process was of finding myself through that. And that was the first opportunity into television. That was really the first opportunity into television. Um, when I was in radio, I, it was great because I did red carpets interviews. I had a lot, but I got to work with Univision. But it, it was always, you know, some camera work and everything. It, it always came easy because I came from radio. I, I, I learned to speak the Spanish, you know, Spanish properly. And, and that helped. But to transition into the American market was a whole different animal. It was completely different. Demands are different. Um, having a cultural back, background of being Mexican, your values are really shown. And your values are really tested. Um, when you go into the industry and you know, that's, that's really been my experience. So I got curvy girls and my values were tested. My values were tested in the sense that if you take up all your clothes and you get on the cover of a magazine, you could go viral and get more work. And those are the kinds of things that came up, you know, as I was going through my career, do I do this to get to the next side? Is that the easy way out? Is that really who I stand for? Do I have an issue? I don't care what anybody else, but do I have an issue? And then the next question is, how my kids view it 10 years from now? What will they have to say? And is this the way that I want to work for my career? Is this how I want to get to the next level? Um, so it was really Kirby Girls that set the tone of, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? And how do I want to do it? And from there, that's where everything took off. I started, you know, getting, you know, on, on Fox, I got on different, you know, um, red carpets, you know, uh, American red carpets and being able to uh, do correspondent work and figure out stories. What kind of stories do I like? You know, uh, I love transformation. You know, I got to kind of figure out and develop where exactly I wanted to land and keep knocking on doors and try different things to figure out, you know, what I absolutely loved. And that brought me to where I am now. Not only it was a, a, it was radio modeling, you know, television in Spanish, television doing the crossover into reality shows, and then from reality shows, correspondent work in 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 the American market, and then from there, you know, finding myself, developing myself, and going into life coaching. So, so speak to me, speak to me about life coaching because what was what was the purpose when you went into life coaching? Um, was it more of a personal journey? 
or was this something that you took on and you said purposefully, I want to help other people because I went through a ton of stress in my life and I don't want other people to have to deal with that. What was that portion of your life? So, so life coaching for me really came from the sense that I, I have a lot of issues. I need to figure my shit out. I really do. I went through a lot of shit and I, I'm not saying that I'm perfect by means like there by, by no means am I perfect. I'm a human being constantly choosing to work on me. Um, I have ups and downs emotionally. Um, there's a lot of triggers that I deal with. And, you know, I think, and, and the thing is I've got to a point where I can acknowledge that. And that's what this has helped me with. Um, life coaching came to me about wanting to figure out why do I think the way that I think, why do I do what I do? Why do I react the way that I act, you know? And, and being able to figure that out and getting to, you know, get understanding my purpose, my goals in every area of my life. How is that going to impact my kids? And wanting to be a better human being, not only for myself, but for my kids. Because monkey see, monkey do. Like, my kids are going to do everything that, that they see me do, not what I tell them to do. So that, for me, was my biggest strike. And when I started figuring out that and I started feeling better in myself, it seems, it seems like the law of attraction comes into place. Your energy starts changing and you start attracting. As much as you attract the light, you attract the darkness. And I just started running into different human beings that had struggled and had gone through, whether it was failed relationships, divorce, infidelity, weight loss, weight gain, um, motherhood, you know, uh, going through, you know, parenting as a single parent, parenting as, you know, being married, um, and then trying to figure yourself as a mother, as an entrepreneur, as someone that's seeking, you know, life goals, and then as a parent and being able to balance all that, the chaos of all of that, and connecting with all these people, it just showed me that I had gone through so much, but at the same time, I felt like it was my responsibility to pay it forward as I became better. Who can I help along the way? Because I know that those are blessings that I am, you know, helping other people that if those blessings don't come back to me, someone will be able to help my kids if I'm not around. And I think that was the biggest purpose of leaving my imprint in this world before I go. I want to, and I appreciate that. And I guess that's where, where you're at now when you, you know, now you have a brand, uh, you have, you have like a, a certification in, in life coaching. It's the best way I can put it from, um, from the man himself, from Tony Robbins, who basically has done his entire career. And I guess he, he runs a course now that teaches this and, and it's all about, um, you know, helping others. You said marginalized, uh, transforming societal norms and that all, and so that all are valued and, and all are accepted. Now, now let me understand what prompted you because you, you've now come to terms with who you are as a person. You, you're sort of taking these steps to, to understand a little bit more about who you are, but then you've also gone on this incredible weight loss journey for, you know, you've lost probable, it says, you know, I'm reading this bio, it's 240 pounds. But obviously, I'm sure more than that, if, if you were, you're originally you know, 400 plus, that's insane. So that's an incredible achievement. But Thank how, you. That's an incredible achievement. And it, it's very, very difficult. But what, how, do you, how do you work with people who aren't able to or maybe aren't ready to lose that amount of weight? Because that's also a big deal for people that don't lose the 200 or the 200 plus pound and they, and they stay a certain size for their, for their entire life. But you still have to like, keep those people feeling like they can, they can stay as, as they are. Or is there a point where it's no longer healthy? And that's what I'm trying to understand. Like, I, I think that the, the, the modeling, uh, plus size modeling and all that is a very beneficial thing because I think there's a lot of negativity. I think social media is very bad for your mental health. But I'm wondering, is there, uh, is there a threshold? that isn't healthy anymore? I think the threshold is, it's not in a number um, because I was 420 pounds and yes, I felt tired, but did I have high blood pressure? You know, that's all debatable. There's a lot of stuff. So through my journey, what I've learned is that if you are investing time into working out, investing time into feed your spiritual, your psychological, your emotional, um, you, you know, well-being, you are going in the right direction and things will transform on its own. Not with the purpose that I have to look at, I have to be, I have to be 160 pounds at a size eight or 10. And my body, you know, my waist has to be a 34 inch waist with a 40 inch hip. Like I got way past that because 
first of all, I'm never going to be that. That is not the structure of my body. That is for me to maintain that weight. The smallest that I got was 175 pounds. And it was such a huge struggle for me. And I think I've never talked about this. This is the first time that I'm talking about it. It was such a huge struggle for me to maintain that, that at the end of the day, it was basically to be able to stay at 175. I had to be on a liquid diet, make sure that I had no bread, no carbs. And when you don't have any of that stuff at all, and you are only on liquids, not only are you going to feel weak, you're going to feel moody. It's going to mess with your mind. And I, that was a process that I had to go through. I was like, yes, I'm 175 pounds. This is the smallest I've ever been. Yay. But I still got bashed of having big hips that I was still fat. Um, that why did I get a tummy tuck? Why did I lose the weight? Um, I still hadn't lost enough weight. And that was a big lesson to me. It was, am I doing this to make other people happy and to fit in? Or am I doing this because I'm sincerely happy? And was this number really, you know, what did this number teach me? So the lesson there was, regardless of where you are in your life, big or small, people will always criticize you. Health is a state of mind and a state of well-being. How much are you investing into your well-being and your state of mind? It does not come to a number because I know people who are 250 pounds that are completely healthy. They don't have any problems. They're exercising and that's just where they're at. And you know, they take care of themselves, they're happy, they're energetic, they can run, they do all these things. And I know people who are 250 pounds who have a whole bunch of health problems and that is your body telling you, this is not healthy. It's not society telling you, it's your own body saying, you have high blood pressure, hello, first sign, you gotta take care of me. You know what, you're getting dizziness, hello, you gotta take care of me. Hey, you know what, you're, you're dehydrated. You know, hello, I need water. So I think it's about listening to your own body and and really understanding what health means to you what are you going to obtain from it what are you going to invest in it and understanding that not everybody wants to be a size zero and understanding that not everybody wants to be plus size it's finding the balance of who you are what you want and what do you want to stand for and what your values are i love that message it's very important and um i wish that more people would realize this and i i 100 blame social media you can see a running theme with my issues with social media for, for painting this unhealthy picture. I just, I thought it was just interesting because I saw the article like where Adele, she lost a ton of weight and then she was getting, she was getting hated on for losing weight. Oh my God, yeah. They, and I didn't understand when Adele lost a lot of weight. I'm like, first of all, I understand what Adele went through because I got bashed, like I got hate mail for losing weight. That and that in itself. And it, when I got hate mail, I was like, hold on. And they're like, you're a sellout. You sold out to Hollywood. I'm like, first of all, like my purpose was, I couldn't like, I, yes, I didn't have any health problems, but I had physical problems. I could not keep up with my children. I couldn't get in a ride and I couldn't fit in certain places. That is an issue. That is my body saying, Hey, hello, you need to do something about this. And the moment that you feel like you're constantly in jail in your own body, that's an issue. But her getting a whole bunch of stuff, like I understand people's concerns, but I think her, her wanting to lose that much weight, that's her own personal decision. And if that's where she is happy with her body and her mind and her soul, then you know congrats to her for t being bold and doing that if she did that for her wonderful um if she didn't do it and that's her own personal journey if she didn't do it and she did it because she, either she was pressured or she had to fit in then she's going to learn from that that'll be a different journey that'll teach her a lot about her own happiness um as as i learned from my own for me being 200 pounds and being curvy and being able to run on the treadmill and being able to exercise for me, it's like, Hey, that's my happiness. Like I feel good at that weight. And people still will still look at me and say, Hey, you're too fat. You got to lose weight. Yeah. I find that there's just so much, there's, there's so much negativity. Like you mentioned before you, you nailed it like both ways. Like if, if you're, if you're, if you portray yourself yeah. as one way, no one's going to be happy. Yeah. If you change still, no one's going to be happy or the original group's not going to be happy. Like no one's ever happy, especially when you're in the public eye. No, so, there's always something that they're, and I think being, a, and, and that's what I've learned about the being in the public eye. There's someone always looking and it, depending on how they feel is how they're going to criticize you or either uplift you. So if they're having a shitty day, they're going to look at you and see everything that's wrong. If they're having a fantastic day, they're going to uplift you. So I just learned that, look, my job is to be happy, to make myself happy, to make myself healthy. And then I will radiate that to my kids and I will be a mirror to my kids. And when I'm in good health and good emotions and um, understanding that I'm walking in gratitude, 
that's going to be a reflection to attract. The moment that I'm not healthy, I'm going to start pushing away stuff. I'm not going to be able to do things. I'm not going to feel like wanting to do things. And it's going to, it's going to be is shown through my attitude. And then it's going to impact my kids and everything else that I do. Now, what, how, do you, how do you take that mindset that you have and as, as a life coach, is this something that you learned? Because I don't know how to do this. I'm really curious if, if you know how to do this effectively. How do you take that mindset and you impart it on somebody who is way more impressionable and way younger so that they can have that same level of confidence as you? You know what I've learned? And that's such a great question. You cannot force anybody to love you. You cannot force anybody to change. You cannot force anybody to want what they want. They can tell you that they want something, but if they really want something bad enough, they will be open arms, open ears, open mind, and they will be receptive to the wisdom or to the experiences that you have to offer. And just like you, right now, you are receptive, you're open, you are hungry, you're wanting to learn. So if you are like on this path of not only impacting and empowering others, but at the same time, you're going through growth yourself because you're talking to different people to try to understand and learn. You're hungry. You're wanting that information. You're wanting to learn and run with that information, not just want it because everybody can give you the solution and the equation on how to solve the problem. But if you don't want to do the work, the problem will not be solved. So what I've learned is to really understand as I'm working with different people um, in the life coaching is how bad do they want it? And is that what they really want? Because sometimes they say that they want it, but that's what their family wants. That's what their friends want. That's what the husband and wife wants. That's what their kids want for them. But that's not what they want. And I've learned that that wisdom will not be received well if genuinely at their heart, they're not willing to change. And you have to have that honest talk. If you're not willing to do the work, there will be no change. And, and I, I'm going through some of the things that like you're working on um, and, and I don't mind, I don't mind uh, bringing them up. Um, I appreciate your time. So, you know, you have, you have a book, uh, The Girl with the Self-Esteem Issues that is coming out October 13th, 2020. You have a podcast launching as well, I think, coming up this. Is it all around the same, same topic? So self-esteem, life coaching, like love yourself. Like just really, really a ton of positivity in these, I'm assuming. Well, you know what? It's going to be about everything. It's going to be about infidelity and marriages and sex and parenting. And it's going to be about, you know, health and losing weight and gaining weight. It's going to be about finances. It's going to be about kids. Um, I'm talking about every area of my life. Um, and I'm an open book and I am curious and, and I have so much hunger to learn. Um, so I am, you know, I've, I've been so blessed with, with this book because it not only has been therapeutic, but it has also taught me a lot about why I did a lot of things that I did in the past and how I've become better at understanding triggers and then also celebrating my victories because that's something I had to learn to do also because I was so much, you know, being, being Latina, I was brought up, you work, 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 work but never did I get to celebrate so many victories, so many things that I've accomplished and being able to celebrate those moments are important to keep going, to have that energy. But we're going to be talking about lots of things, you know, from the book. Um, you know, I, I think there's just so many, I, I was single for so many years and then, you know, being married and now having a new baby and entering into motherhood at this age and, and just learning about, learning about how everything just comes together and being able to impart that wisdom, but also receive new wisdom from other people that are just doing amazing things. So for me, the podcast and the book is about creating an impact, educating, being able to connect, having compassion and understanding that every human being goes through ups and goes through lots of downs and a lot of crazy shit that happens in life. And it's about teaching people how to get through that crazy shit, you know, not, yeah. about, not around it, getting through the crazy shit and understanding. And what are, what, what is, you know, um, the life coaching business is, is a lot of people sharing like their darkest moments. What are, what are things that you see, um, obviously without <laughs> naming names, of course, but what are, what are really, uh, horrible things that people are trying to deal with in, in 2020? Because I think I'm, I never grew up in this kind of age when in this so you know so connected always seeing things that seem better seem you know our different lives that are better people that are in quote unquote better shape all on social and and just as a kid i'm curious what do they come to you with what are some of the problems that they're they're seeing and and what is the reality of a kid or or somebody who's just stressed or struggling in 2020 2020 um i think 
the biggest thing that I have seen, um, and it's been something that I've seen repetitively, um, I, I, it's quite it's quite crazy how much of this comes up and I went through this personally. So I was able to like, I'm able to look at them, like go to the core and the core is loving connection. Number one, feeling loved and appreciated and being feeling so disconnected from the world right now. And people want a place of belonging. They want love in their life, whether it's through family or through friends or through that personal love connection. Um, but also feeling, feeling like a, trying to find a sense of purpose through all of this, you know, feeling lost kind of like, I, you know, I'm at this point where like, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I feel like I lost myself a sense of, you know, feeling lost. Mm -hmm. And I've just seen that constant. So feeling lost, love and connection. I think, I think there's so many factors that play into that just because oh, you think about uh, like, man, like the social stuff, like even like COVID, like my God, kids that are graduating this year, like job prospects, there's a whole bunch of like employment stats, like lack of employment, plus on, on top of lack of employment, just people changing jobs every year. Like there's so much uncertainty. Like, you know, keep, keep saying like, I, I don't know how I'm going to have kids. Like it's going to be stressful for me because well, I, don't, I, I don't have kids yet. Yeah. Well, I have a baby that I just had a month ago. So yeah, I know. Well, congratulations, I, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Having been in the hospital and seeing how much of a go, how crazy it is to go in one at a time. It was me first. And then I had to get changed and get ready for my C-section. And then, then they let my husband go up. But then having this worry, okay, you know, is everything disaffected? Like, is everything okay with the nurses? You can't have people visiting. Everything's via FaceTime. Everybody's meeting your baby. There's not like this personal contact. Um, you know, it, well, I'm thankful that they let me have my husband there. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to say as, as much as people are saying, you know, that, that COVID and it's crazy times. I just want to offer a little bit of light. And for those that are watching, I think everything in life presents a great opportunity. And as bad and horrifying as not only COVID, but the racism and everything that you know is going on right now, you know, whether it's politics, whether whether it's it's health, everything, like this is such a crazy time because everything is getting shifted left and right. We're in this transformation. Um and I think a lot of people are waking up and they're getting in tune and they're understanding the importance of connection and respect and love and the importance of health and valuing family and valuing friends. Um, but this also presents a great time that even though everything is happening, it presents a time to be able to educate yourself, to become better as a human being. And it presents a time where you can invest in yourself because all this time that people had for quarantine, um, it's either you did nothing you were frustrated or you dealt with your frustrations you, it forced you to look inward it forced you to look at the family that you're living with what's missing what can you do better and it also forced you to think quickly what am i going to do to provide what am i going to do to step up how can i educate myself what can i learn either i go to social media to look at what everybody's doing or i go to social media for a source of, of inspiration and to become better that's a great lesson. I think that this is a great opportunity, like you mentioned, as horrible as times are, to just to just like upskill, to learn, to improve yourself. And if there's one thing, you know, there's one thing that's it, it, there's one thing that's coming to light now, is that is that ev everything you do, every action you take, everything you say, everything you say, even in you think it's in private, nothing's private anymore. Nothing's private. If you if you have views that are considered outdated that's really the best way to put it about certain things i think now is a really good time not just on like the on the so on like the um like the job and the professional development but like just like personal development like you see personal people getting like just wrung out on social media uh, for things they've done years ago and this is like a wake-up call it's because people um people were it's not like people just became racist or people just became um, cruel and vindictive they always were but yeah. now if you are, it's very public and people will pick up on that. So I think that, you know, it's just a, a time to think about who you are as a person and how you want to be represented to the world. And don't and like, I, don't, go oh, ahead, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and now I, I think you bring up such great points. You know, I think so many people thought, you know, years ago they could get away with so much. And you need to understand that when you do something bad, like you make a bad decision, not because it's forced upon you, not because it's wished upon you. This is just the way it is. We pay for everything that we do, good and bad, before we die. 
And that is passed on along to our kids. We are teaching our kids right from wrong. If we are acting stupid, don't expect, you know, don't, don't expect anything good to come out of that. If you are vocalizing hate, don't expect it to not catch up to you eventually. If you are showing love, you know, don't think that that's going to be, you know, unseen. I think everything is coming up to light. And I think what's most important is this is a great time to understand who you are as a human being and your values and how your values have impacted you and where they're taking you. And if you do not like what you have created, the wonderful thing is you have an opportunity not only to apologize, to step up, to do something and make things right, and also create impact and really take action in that part. And I think this is what it's taught us. It's taught us to be able to look at other people who have done stupid things, who, you know, who regret what they've done but also to give them the opportunity to change things around. And if they don't change, they're going to pay the price. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And um, that's a really good point though. But I really wish what I wish though, was when people do like when people do try and change, I, I, I hate cancel culture. I hate it, hate it, hate it. I hate cancel culture because I hate that it brings up things that maybe people haven't changed, but it brings up things that happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago when people were much younger. And it, it, it vilifies them now. And I guess I just wish that for the, same, for the same opportunity, for those people that did bad, and if they are still bad people, if they, are, if they are still very hateful people, then maybe they deserve it. But I do believe that there's an opportunity to grow. Absolutely. And maybe I guess it's just like a, a process. I don't know. It just seems like a very angry culture when people discover anything about anyone. I don't yeah, like that. It, it just, it seems like they feed on that and they want to tear other people down. And, and that's where I, where I come in and I say like, you know, even if you did it 10 years ago, it shows you a side that, you know, hopefully you no longer are and you learn from that. But if you haven't learned from that's the only thing that I do that I do say that if you haven't learned from that, then, you know, it gives you an opportunity to kind of wake up and see and, and also like speak up about it. I just, I don't know. It, it's just so hard. Like it's so hard. Every, everybody's going through so much and I just, all I know is at the end of the day, this is a great opportunity of growth to pay it forward, to take action, to use your voice. Because if you think your voice doesn't matter, you are wrong. Your voice has so much power. It takes one person to really stand up and create change and, and to get things going. You know, one post could go viral in a second, yeah. you know, yeah. whether it's good or bad. It, there, it holds a lot of power right now. So we hold a lot more power than we think. Very well said. Um, I'm going to ask a couple of quick rapid fire, uh, like life insight lesson questions that you've learned. But before I do that, I just wanted to ask, is there anything that we didn't touch on that you wanted to speak about or you wanted to, to bring up? No, I love talking to you. You have such, you have such great, um, great questions. Thank you. I appreciate it. You have really good questions. Thank I love you. that. Well, I just, I'm curious. That's it. When I do my podcast, it's like, hmm, that's a good question. Like I, that's, I, I want to go that way. So thank you for the inspiration. No, it's my pleasure. I just, you know, for this, like, I'm not, I'm not like a, a trained broadcaster. <laughs> like, I just, I, I just ask questions that I want to know the answer to. I just, you know I'm, what? A, I'm a that's, curious person. That's, that's a great thing. You're authentic and you're real and you're curious. And I think that's, that's what's the, it's not about training. It's about just the passion behind it. So I believe that hundred percent. Thank you. That's really, really kind. I appreciate that. Um, Okay, so let's, let's do some, some rapid fire. So one question I like to ask everyone is one life lesson that you would tell your younger self. Don't listen to the negativity that people offer. Just don't make other people's stories your own. Don't, because you lose so many opportunities and it, because it creates so much personal pain. Let it go. People tell you something that you don't like. Feel what you got to feel in that moment. Let it go, send love, and keep doing you. Turn that, turn that story around and always declare who you are. I'm powerful. I'm loved. I'm gifted. I have favor and grace. And you know what? The best is yet to come. I love it. I love it. That's a good lesson. Um, and that was so quick too. You didn't even think about that. Some people take a second to think you were like, that was like, like you were good to go. I was <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've got so much shit for everything that I've just learned. Like, all right, this really sucks. I don't like what you have to say. I'm going to cry for like a minute. And then I'm going to like, that hurt. Let it go. All right, Rosie, who are you? Remind yourself who you are. Get it together, girl. That's real. I, I appreciate that. All right. Um, last, last question before I just get some, some uh, contact info out of you so people can go check you out and, and go find more about who you are. But I want to ask one more. Um, what would be a source? It could be a book, a podcast, an audible, a person, something that you go to to learn from that other people should go check out. Oh, God. What do I learn from? 
constantly. Um, I can name, you know, a couple, you know, a couple books that, that I've read. Um, but when I really want to learn, and I think it's different for everybody and I respect everybody's opinion on this, but this is my personal, um, I, I, I pray. I honestly, I go to prayer and I ask for guidance. I ask for guidance and I ask for growth. And it's always revealed to me within, within days, within months, like someone, you know, I'll have a mentor. And for me, it's about listening to people that have gone through bigger experiences than I have. You have Michael Beckwith, you have Jay Shetty, you have Lewis Howes, you have Tony Robbins, Gary Vee, Oprah Winfrey. You have so many inspirational leaders out there. But first, before I go about anything and I'm going through a hardship, I always go into prayer and meditation. And that for me is the number one step um, to obtain like knowledge and, and empowerment because I feel like I'm guided. I really feel like I'm guided to find those answers and the people that I need and the podcasts that I need and the books that I need um, are revealed to me somehow, some way it is revealed to me. So for me, before I do anything, the power of prayer. I love that. Um, so that's, that's two good points. So not only, not only just like finding that inner peace prayer, whatever that looks like for whoever, because I know a lot of people pray in different ways, but also yeah, like, prayer, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But also the mentorship piece is also very important and you hear that time and time again, but you can't drive it home enough. Like yeah, surround yourself with these people. The mentorship is so huge. Why? Because why do you want to recreate the wheel? Like someone's already doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I want, I want some of what they're doing. How did you do it? And, and it's just like you, it's about being curious and asking questions, but okay. With so many inspiration, there's so many, you're an inspiration. Like there's so many inspirations out there that have to obtain knowledge. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting my podcast. I want to come to you. How did you start your podcast? I'll like, tell you. Well, I'll, I'll give you a rundown, like right from the beginning, all the, all the yeah. stuff that I went through. Yeah. See, so, and, and, that's, and that's what people, people find themselves stuck when they're like, well, I don't even know how to start. So what the, I'm not even going to start. I just feel stuck. And then you get this frustration. Well, I don't have what I want. I'm not getting this. Okay. So what are you doing? Well, I don't know how to do it. Okay. But who's done it? That's a good question. Let me figure it out. Hold on. Before I do that. All right. I need to meditate who's done it? What do I want? I need answers. Help. Like just angels, help me. God help me. You know, whatever it is for you, just help guide me. And it seems like someone will call me like, did you listen to this podcast? Or someone will say, Hey, I want you to meet this friend. He's done very well in this business. He could offer you some advice. I know you had some questions. Something will be revealed to you, but you must seek it. And you have to have an open mind for it too. Cause if you don't have an open mind for it, even if it, even if it's in your face, you won't, you won't see it. Um, I, I want to just, uh, you know, hard work, hard work. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, you know, I, I don't want to drag this out because that was a really good point. I don't want to take away from it, but a data, like a data point on that. Like if you don't, if you're not looking for it, you won't see it. Like there are actual, actually like psychological studies done that if you can't see yourself driving, for example, like some like luxury car, like say a Porsche or whatever you want to, you, you think Porsche is like a nice luxury car, but you can't see yourself in it. You can't see, you make enough money for it you will actually not see it when a Porsche goes down the street. Like you will be less tuned in to seeing Porsches go by because you don't see yourself in that car. Whereas if you're always thinking about it, always tuned into it, you'll actually notice them more often. But uh -huh. it's not because there's more of them on the road. It's because now you are actually keeping awake. it top of mind. You're awake to the opportunity. It's just a silly, a silly, and you ever, you've probably seen that before where, or you've felt it where you've thought about something and then all of a sudden it's like you've seen it whatever that thing is like in your life or in, in your, in your circle or whatever it is like a week later, or a couple of days later. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, it, it's, it, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely happened. I know that like when Tesla, like, for example, this is a crazy example, but, um, when Tesla's first came out, I said, I want a Tesla. I want a Tesla. I want a Tesla. And, and I didn't really see too many of uh, the, the model, the model X is out. I, I just didn't. And then all of a sudden it's like, you get that, you get to that point where you're like, you manifest that or you manifest an opportunity in that job. And then you're like, Oh, there it is. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere because you become awake to it. So that's so funny that you mentioned that is so, so true. And I wish people it's like color red, the color red, don't think about the color red. And the first thing you think about is the color red and you see yeah. it everywhere. Yeah. Well, actually I did. That's not my lesson. So I actually interviewed, um, Joe Vitale from, he was in, he was famously made, he was made famous, excuse me, by the movie, The Secret. And, and I thought his, he's, you know, he's an incredible individual, but he actually told me that lesson. It was, I think it was, I think it was him. If I remember correctly, I'll have to go back and listen to my own podcast it was a couple months ago, but I think I got it from him. 
but it was a, it was eye opening for me to think about it in that in that light. I have a question for you. Yeah, too. Yeah. So you've interviewed some amazing human like human beings, like just some like I look at some of the people that you you you've connected with, and because you've elevated yourself to that energetic level to be able to attract that into your life, um, and you've obviously prepped for that. Mm -hmm. But what is the biggest lesson that you've learned interviewing so much? Like, what is there a commonality? Is there something that just keeps popping up for you that you've learned interviewing all these people? I would say um, it depends on on what lesson I'm trying to pull out. But yes, definitely. Like in terms of in terms of success, um, the two drivers would be curiosity and grit. So just dealing and just sort of pushing ahead, no matter how much negativity or or just you know shit you have to go through but also curiosity and and always trying to find new ways to do things i'd say as an entrepreneur that's probably the two most successful traits yeah. um in terms of just personality or um maybe like an yeah. aha moment you're like oh my god like i would say self-aware very very self-aware of of their own faults like 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 painfully self-aware of yeah. of all the things that are wrong with them and, and okay verbalizing it. Like they'll tell you, I screwed up here. I'm not good at this. This was a low point in my life. You know, I was homeless here. I, I got fired here because of this. And that's what prompted me to understand what I had to do to, to be better. And like those, those self-aware moments, I think are super, super key. Yeah. Anybody who is successful. I, I'm, I'm almost, that's a trend that I've seen across literally everyone. Like I'm like, so the people that I've spoken to that are, I, I don't like to name names. Some people do have like more, more of a following, but everyone I've spoken to is incredible. But there's some people that have like a little bit more notoriety. So like the guy Kawasaki, uh, Grant Cardone, uh, Anthony Scaramucci. Um, Grant Cardone uh, blew my mind. I just have to say, blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very, it, no matter what, and they're all different industries, right? They're all different in, in what they do. Like Guy Kawasaki is, was, well, at the time, marketing for Apple, then now uh, he does some stuff for Canva and a couple other, you know, uh, brand sponsorships, Anthony Scaramucci, director of communications. And then um, now he's, uh, now he runs his own investment firm. And Grant Cardone is like sales guy turned influencer turned, you know, uh, he has like a couple billion assets under management as a retail, a real estate investor. So all very like so, some differences, some similarities, like all very successful individuals, but it's that self-awareness and I'd say curiosity and grit are things that they all have. That would be, that would be wow. huge. For, and that's something that I, I definitely see. And not just in the names. Like I, can, I can name other people who, if, you've, if you aren't in, like, for example, the Silicon Valley, San Francisco, tech scene, you're not going to know these people because they're CEOs yeah. of companies. But it's the same. It's the same. And these are all like, you know, multi-million dollar, billion dollar, uh, like software SaaS startups. It's all the same personality trait, for sure. Wow. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. This is, this has been amazing. No. Thank you so much. Like for answering that question, it's always a curiosity of mine to like figure out what people's aha moments, especially being, you know, going into the podcast world and to the, you've been doing it and just everything that you've created and the people that you've connected to. So it's always, I find that so intriguing always. Cause there's always like you interview these people that you're like, Oh my God, you got to interview this person. What did you learn? That for me is like, what did you learn? Give me that. Give me the sauce. I've also, you know, when I started this, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to start, um, a podcast that was, when I first started this podcast, I meant to start a podcast, sorry, I misspoke, but it was focused on, on my background, which was sales and marketing. Like I, my whole career was in sales and marketing and I was speaking to a lot of executives and it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. Um, but I found that the way I learn is to learn from leaders, not learn from leaders only in the thing that I'm doing. So when I listen to people, I listen to like very, you know, influential politicians. I listen to world leaders, religious leaders. Um, it could be in arts. It could be in finance. And all, again, you see all these people have similar traits. So that's how I learn. So what I wanted to do with this podcast is I pivoted. I moved it from just focusing on sales and marketing executives, CEOs, because I had no reason to, to ever start something like uh, I never wanted to be like a consultant. And I guess that's kind of what you do when you do like a very niche down um, podcast. So I just opened it up. I opened it up to speak to incredible people with incredible stories, sort of pulling out their playbook and like their insights and their life lessons from whatever, you know, whatever they've experienced. And then you start to see those commonalities and those trends across people of different industries. And that's what I think is super powerful for somebody who is earlier on in their career. It could be somebody in a company. It could be somebody who's trying to start their own business. It could be somebody 
who just wants to sort of expand their, their mind and like learn from the best and the brightest across a couple different industries. That's really what I wanted it to be. And that's what it is right now. So, you know, I speak to yourself who has, you know, you've done modeling, you've done broadcast. Now you're, you're doing your own branding. You're building out your own persona. Um, you're building out a life coaching business. Um, but I've also spoken to, a, like, again, like, you know, Grant Cardone, I don't think has a very similar origin story to yourself, but he, uh, he still has a lot of really interesting lessons that I hope that you can learn from some lessons from yourself, some lessons from him and some lessons from all the others. So everybody has, every human being has something to offer. That's the most beautiful thing. Sometimes it's in not seeing our own value and our own potential that we choose not to share our stories and we, you, you miss out on not doing so. So yeah. every human being has something to offer. But and you know what? Thank you. I appreciate it. That's really kind of you. And I'll tell you something too. I'll tell you one more thing. And, and as a marketer, uh, you know, I've, I've worked in various like executive roles running marketing and sales organizations. And as a marketer, the number one piece of advice I'd give anybody if they want to build out a company brand or a personal brand is just speak your truth, speak who you are, speak what you're dealing with. If you are, if you are, uh, you know, a dog walker and all you do for your entire career, you're, you know, you're a, a, uh, an entrepreneur, you're a dog walker, speak about all the things that you deal with while building out a dog walking business because somebody else is going to be trying to learn how to do that. And that's your tribe. And that's who you want to, you want to build that audience. And that's, that's marketing 101. You want to build an audience, want to build a tribe, right? And if you speak about your truth, there's going to be somebody who wants to listen to it. But, not, but so many people have this like apprehension towards speaking about who they are. And I don't really know why. I guess, I guess it's, I guess it's stressful to put yourself out there, but if you do, you'll find your tribe. And I think that's a really, really important lesson because in 2020 age of social media, yeah, if you yeah, don't, no. if you don't have a brand, you don't have anything. Even as an individual, you have to have some sort of brand because you already have a brand, but if you don't put out content, you don't have control over your brand. People Absolutely. are going to just assume. Yeah. And I think to your point that people are afraid to speak their truth. And what I've noticed and what I've learned about that is people are afraid to speak their truth for the fear of criticism, for the fear of being accepted, for the fear of being disconnected, the fear of not being seen as perfection or, you know, they, they have this, this, this personality that they're putting out there. It is so relaxing to just walk in and own your shit and just say, this is who I am. I have nothing to hide. And you want to ask me something you know, right or wrong, I'll answer the question and just know that I'm here learning along the way with you. I love it. Word. Okay. So wait, I, you know, I, I, I hijacked the last part of that. That wasn't cool. You shouldn't, you shouldn't <laughs> have done that. I like talking too much. That's your own fault. Um, but I want to, I want to get, all, huh? it's all good. It's all about learning. I got my own curiosities too. Damn it. I have to ask my questions. Okay. Well, next time I'll go on, I'll go on your show. <laughs> yes, yes, I want to have you on. All right. Deal. Deal. Um, I need to know, uh, where do people go to find out more about you, uh, your website, your social? Yeah, simple. RosieMercado.com. And you can find me on, fa- on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Rosie Mercado. Super simple. And right. if you want to reach out and DM me and you have any questions, I am here to help. And I hope that when you do have a chance and you're looking for personal you know, transformation or growth, a little bit of inspiration, a good kick in the ass, make sure to pick up the girl with the self-esteem issues launched on October 13th. Big thanks to Harper Collins and the whole team. and and also to my family at Himalaya with the podcast that's coming up. And I hope to have you on, on the pod, a podcast with me. There's a lot that we, we could talk about. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll do it. I, for sure I'll do it. That's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's all for today. Thanks again for joining me on another episode of the Success Story Podcast. You can download or stream this podcast wherever podcasts are available, including iTunes, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and many others. You can also watch this podcast on YouTube. If you haven't already, please subscribe and share this podcast with your friends, family, coworkers, and peers. Please leave us a rating on iTunes. It takes about 30 seconds as it allows other people to find our podcast and lets our amazing guests reach even more people with their message. And remember, any rating is fine as long as it contains five stars. I'm Scott Clary from the Success Story Podcast, signing off.